Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rubiul. I work as a lecturer of pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is antigen and immunogen. This is the second lecture of our ongoing immunology series. In this video, we will learn the definition of antigen and immunogen, the features of molecules that determine immunogenicity. We will also talk briefly about haptans and epitopes. And towards the end of today's video, we will learn how haptan carrier protein conjugate can induce an immune response. Okay, a lot of topics, so let's begin. So we will start with definitions and the first definition that we will talk about is antigen and then we will talk about the definition of immunogen. Now my students often become very confused when they are studying the definition of antigen and the definition of immunogen. So let's try to clarify these two definitions now. So how can we define antigen? Always remember antigen can be defined as an organism, a molecule or even part of a molecule that is recognized by our immune system. Antigens can also be defined as molecules that react with antibodies. Okay, so antigens are molecules that can react with antibodies and antigen can be an organism, it can be a molecule or even part of a molecule that is recognized by our immune system. Antigens may be simple, complex, protein, carbohydrate or synthetic in origin. So what do we mean by immunogens? Immunogens can be defined as molecules that induce immune response. Now in most of the cases antigens are immunogens and the term antigen is often used interchangeably with the term immunogen. However, there are some important exceptions. For example, haptans. So what do we mean by haptan? A haptan can be defined as a molecule that is not immunogenic by itself, but that can react with specific antibody. The second bullet point is further clarifying the definition. Haptan is a non-protein substance which has no immunogenic properties by itself. However, when haptan is combining with a specific carrier protein, it can form a haptan carrier conjugate that acts as a new antigen that is capable of forming antibodies. So what do we mean by antibodies? An antibody is a protein substance that is produced as a result of antigenic stimulation. So now that we have talked about the various definitions, now we will move on and talk about the features of molecules that determine their immunogenicity. The features will include foreignness, molecular size, chemical structural complexity, epitopes, conformation and accessibility, chemical properties, the genetic constitution of host, dosage, route and timing of antigen administration, adjuvants, etc. So now let's talk about these various features one by one and the first feature that we will talk about is regarding foreignness. Now always remember in order to be immunogenic molecules must be recognized as foreign or non-self. In general our immune system is tolerant to molecules that are 
recognized as self molecules. That means self molecules are not immunogenic. The next feature that we will talk about is regarding molecular size. Proteins larger than 10,000 Dalton or 10 kilodalton are usually more immunogenic. The most potent immunogens are proteins with high molecular weight and generally molecules with molecular weight less than 10,000 are weakly immunogenic. Very small molecules, for example, amino acids are non-immunogenic. The next feature that we will talk about is regarding chemical structural complexity. A certain amount of chemical structural complexity is required for a molecule to become immunogenic. Complex proteins with numerous and diverse epitopes are more immunogenic and they are more likely to induce immune response than simple peptides containing only single or a few epitopes. For example, amino acid homopolymers are less immunogenic than heteropolymers containing two or three different amino acids. The next feature that we will talk about is very important and that is epitopes. These are small chemical groups on the antigen molecule that evoke and react with antibody. They are also known as antigenic determinants. These are the smallest part of an antigen that can be seen by somatically generated B and T cell receptors. And we will talk about B and T cell receptors in details in our upcoming lectures of the immunology series. Now always remember an antigen may have one or more epitopes. Most antigens have multiple epitopes and they are multivalent. Different epitopes on the same antigen may be recognized by different lymphocytes, each with a unique set of receptors. The next feature that we will talk about is regarding conformation and accessibility. And always remember, epitopes must be seen and they must be accessible to the immune system in order to induce an immune response. The next feature is regarding chemical properties. Always remember, a protein immunogen must be enzymatically cleavable by Phagocytes. For example, L amino acid containing polypeptides can be enzymatically cleaved inside the phagocytes, and that's why they are considered good immunogens. However, since D amino acid containing polypeptides cannot be enzymatically cleaved inside the phagocytes, so they are poorly immunogenic. The next feature that we will talk about is regarding the genetic constitution of host, the genetic constitution of host, particularly the HLA genes, can determine whether a molecule is immunogenic or not. For example, different strains of the same species of animal may show different response to the same antigen. Similarly, dosage, route, and timing of antigen administration may also affect immunogenicity. Now, the next feature is very important for your examination and the next feature that we will talk about is adjuvants. Adjuvants can enhance the immune response to an immunogen. They are not covalently bound to immunogen, but they can act in various ways. For example, they can slow the release of antigens and that will prolong their action. They can enhance uptake of immunogen by antigen presenting cells. Now, whenever the examiners hear the term antigen presenting cells, they are very fond of asking you 
what are the antigen present in cells. So always remember macrophages, dendritic cells, B lymphocytes, these are the antigen present in cells and always remember their names. So adjuvants can also act by inducing co-stimulatory molecules and they can also act by stimulating toll-like receptors. The last topic that we will talk about today is regarding how heptin carrier conjugate can induce an immune response. And in order to explain that, you can see that I have drawn a simple diagram. So let's talk about that now. So this image is showing us how heptin carrier conjugate can induce an immune response. On the left side of this diagram, we can see a heptin that is bound to a carrier protein. Then the heptin carrier protein complex will interact with immunoglobulin M receptor that is located on the surface of B lymphocyte. What will happen next? The heptin carrier protein complex will be internalized and then peptide from the carrier protein will be presented in association with class 2 MAC protein to T helper cell. What will happen next? This will activate T lymphocyte. This will activate the helper T lymphocyte and then the helper T lymphocyte will produce different types of interleukins. For example, interleukin 4, interleukin 5. They will again stimulate B lymphocyte to become plasma cell and then plasma cell will produce antibodies that will be specific for the heptin. So this is the mechanism by which heptin carrier protein complex can induce an immune response. This is very important for your examination. You may also get question in your written examination and whenever you are drawing this image, pay attention to the shape of these cells. For example, you can see that I have drawn lymphocytes with large nucleus and narrow rim of cytoplasm and when I drew plasma cell, I drew the nucleus in cartwheel or clock face appearance. So always keep these features in your mind and then you will get good marks in your examination. Now, one thing you have to remember is that heptins are usually small molecules, but some high molecular weight nucleic acids are heptins as well. Many drugs are also heptins. A very common example is penicillins. Penicillins are heptin. And also catechol in plant oil that causes poison oak, poison ivy, that is also heptin. So remember that catechol that is in the plant oil and that causes poison oak and poison ivy is also a heptin. So this concludes our second lecture of immunology series. I hope this video was helpful. If you like my videos, do comment, share, subscribe and let me know. And for my students, I will also recommend you to go through your textbooks to know more. Okay, that's all for today. Until next time, take care and stay blessed. Thank you.